Welcome to Right Talk with Mike Lee. I have with me this evening two fine gentlemen from two institutions that I admire very, very much for very different reasons. But I hope to, that they can educate you and inform you and enlighten you as to what their two institutions do that is so important to the community and to the nation, actually. On my right is Randolph Goodman, who's a representative of the Gary Job Corps Center in San Marcos, Texas, which is the largest job corps center in the nation. And on my left is Wayne Knox from Houston Tillerson University, a guy who I've been trying to run down and corner for a little while now. Uh, well, welcome. We're going to talk about education and about what, first of all, what Job Corps does, and then what HC does, and then what they do collaboratively. Okay. So Tell us about Job Corps. Well, Let's Job Corps has been around for uh, 52 years. Our anniversary was in, uh, in the bill was signed in 64, 19, or in August. And the Gary Center has been open since uh, February of uh, 64. But anyway, what we do is we train at-risk youth, which are socially and economically at risk, and they come to our center, and we teach vocational training and, and also academic training. Unlike a lot of institutions, the Job Corps has, is known for training on three different levels, and one of them is the academics. You know, everybody trains in academics. We have academics, and then there's also the vocational skills, of which we have over 25 vocations. But we also do a lot of social skills training. And that social skills training are, are what em employers come to us about. And you know, I said, we can teach anybody to do anything, but we need them to be able to socialize and be able to come to work on time and to dress for the job and all that stuff. So, you know, that's kind of, you know, in a nutshell, that's kind of what we do. And we've been doing it for 52 years. We, we have, uh, Part of our alumni are scattered all over the United States, and one of our more famous alumni is the one that lives here in, in Houston, Texas, a guy by the name of George Foreman. He graduated from Job Corps. He beat some people up, too. He just did a little bit of that, <laughs> but, you know, right now he's a pastor, so that's a good thing. But, yeah, he was uh, one of our alum, and uh, we've had other people that have graduated uh, all the, right here in Austin. and. George Foreman, that's the guy that uh, my baby brother says that he made Joe, uh, Joe Frazier do the Soul Train. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he's still here. You know, he's, still, he's a great man. But, you know, that's kind of what we do. And we're on 800 acres campus there in San Marcos. What do you do for Job Corps? Well, I, job? you know, I have, you know, I am so fortunate that, that I'm, I'm living the dream. You know, because I, you know, when we talk about you know, about at-risk youth, and that's what I was. I, I grew up in East Austin, and and uh, my first university was right here at Houston Tillerson. Thank you all guys for being here. But I was in, in the Upward Bound program, one of the first students, and I came here to HT, to Houston Tillerson. And then, you know, I, I, I took a course of going into the United States Navy, and I was in the Navy for 20 years. But I did that, and mechanic and did a lot of fun things. But anyway, uh, I, w I went to came to work at Job Corps. When I came to work at Job Corps, you know, I saw in all those young men and women, I saw myself. And I saw, you know, Dr. Akins was my mentor. Many, you know, 64 at Johnston High School. But Dr. Akins always, he told me something then that didn't seed until later in my life, but he says to me, he says, I'm giving you a debt. And at the time, I didn't realize what he was talking about until as I got older, I understood what the debt was because he helped me mm -hmm. get where I needed to go. And I have been doing that with Job Corps for the last 25 years because uh, anything that we can do to help these young people, because a lot of times we, you know, you just can't, you got to, you got to set expectations. You got to mm -hmm. set high expectations because a lot of young people, you know, have have been let down a lot in life, and then that's part of what we do is we do as mentors and and uh, our instructors, instructional mm -hmm. staff. We have uh, counselors that help the students, uh, and then also our alum. Mr. Goodman, for yes, a time, sir. for a short time. During, during my career, I mm -hmm. worked as a substitute teacher in HI Houston Independent School District. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Teaching at-risk and uh, at-risk students. Mm -hmm. And I taught in the alternative district at a 
school called Contemporary Learning Center. It's, it's CLC. In the teacher, um, among the teachers on the quiet, they used to call it Criminal's Last Chance. Uh -huh. Because we had students who would you know, come mm -hmm. to class, mm -hmm. they, they're on probation or been in trouble with the law. And I'm sure that a few of the guys that I taught went through a job corps. There's one in particular, I, I, I won't call his name, but okay. I could tell he was probably going to make job, job corps when he was in third grade. <laughs> but it, it, there's it's kind of a reputation out there of, of job corps like just bad kids. But I've, I've learned from mm -hmm. my dealings mm -hmm. with, with, with Job Corps that they have, they actually, it's actually a school that you can actually learn mm -hmm. some things that you should have been able to get in public school. Correct. It's like a stopgap type of measure, it seems. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like I said, you know, that, that one, that one uh, element that the Job Corps has to offer, and that's the social skills training, that's something that's not offered as you know with schooling you know that they that they just they take one or the other or they take them both you know with uh, in colleges and universities but you know this whole socialization end of it there are things that have to happen you know like i said i was in the navy for 20 years and the socialization with all of us that went in is you go into boot camp and then you learn you become socialized as to what your role is and how you fit in life and the same thing goes with, with Job Corps. You know, the young people, they, we have work-based learning. You know, they do internships. They go into the community. They see what's going on. And then right now, you know, because we do have young people that go to Houston Tillerson College, mm -hmm. or university, I'm sorry. Uh, they also attend Austin Community College. You know, this is a part of our, the, uh, the, or it's the career training module part of it where the students go on, when they graduate from us, they go on to higher education. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't, I didn't, I did not, when I was substitute teaching in high mm -hmm. schools, I didn't realize that all of that went on at Job Corps. I thought, oh, yeah. it was just, I, yeah. I thought these kids are just mm -hmm. too bad, they're just giving up, they're just going to, I thought it was something like military or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did not realize it was like a campus, that they stayed on campus, and it was very much like a college situation. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I didn't realize that they had students from, what, 16 to 24, something like that? Correct. That it's an alternative if things aren't working out for mm -hmm. you in public school. I met a young lady who uh, was in high school in Houston, but she said she mm -hmm. left high school because it wasn't doing her any good. And then after I learned what Job Corps was and what it did, I could see where, where that was a logical decision to make. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, that's, that's, that's kind of like my, my relationship I would have with a Job Corps student. He, on, the other, on the other hand, Houston Tillerson always seemed sp special to me here mm -hmm. because I'm a shameless pander, you know, for, for conservative causes. And I thought that uh, Houston Tillerson I did not know that Houston Tillerson was a liberal arts college, and I went to a liberal arts college myself called Denison University. You may have heard of it, Wayne. Mm -hmm. I understand. I, I met Wayne some time ago, as I've said earlier. And Wayne's from Cincinnati. He went to the other high school. I went to Withrow. <laughs> I, maybe I went to the other high school. I don't know. You, can, <laughs> you know, I went to Withrow. You yeah. went to Wanda Hills. Yeah, Wanda Hills Eagle, yes, sir. Okay. I was a Tiger. Yes, but, uh, I did not know Houston Tillerson was a liberal arts college because that's where I went. I went to Dennis University, which was a liberal arts college, after I left high school. Mm -hmm. And I was impressed. Number one, there was a liberal arts college because I kind of knew what it meant. You kind of learned a lot of little stuff about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Nothing in particular, no engineering and things like that, but just kind of like learning. And as a professor at uh, Houston Tillerson, Dr. Y'all call him Dr. Paul, I call him Dr. Anish Jinnu because that's his name, he's a mm -hmm. Nigerian, P political science professor. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he was telling me about some, about some projects he's trying to work on over there. Mm -hmm. What is it that you do at Houston Tillerson besides run the place? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't run the place quite, but I, I do have an a interesting kind of mix of, of, of responsibility. So at the, at the university, I'm the chief of staff and clerk of the board. So what that means is I, I'm the senior vice of the president on all matters university related. And then I have special responsibility for certain units. So the student affairs operation, which is your typical um, campus life, uh, student development, um, housing, et cetera, et cetera. Then I'm also responsible for enrollment management, which is your standard um, admissions, 
financial aid and registrar's office, and then I have um, athletics, and we have eight sports teams ranging from basketball all the way over to um, women's softball. And then I'm responsible for board affairs. On um, board affairs, we have a board of trustees of about 24 individuals, seven committees, or eight committees or so. Or so. And then um, the governor's wife is on your board, correct? She is. She is oh. one of our trustees. She's still there? She is. She is. Yeah. And I have the IT operation. So okay. I have that, that mix of opportunities to um, help move the university forward and to help advance the president's initiatives. You went to Central State back in Ohio, correct? I did. I am a Central State graduate in Wilberforce, Ohio. And I grew up in Lincoln Heights. You know about Lincoln Heights, don't you? I do. know quite a bit. Lincoln Heights is about 12 miles or so from, from Cincinnati proper, if you will. I uh, spent a lot of time out there in that area. Um, a lot of friends that attended Princeton High School. Oh, yeah. Um, and so spent a lot of time in the Lincoln Heights area. Okay. But you got out at night, right? <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did. I, I made the journey um, a little further north to Wilberforce, Ohio, um, to pursue my, my degree of finance at Central State. I'm at one of our sister HBCUs. Um, a lot of people don't know. Um, Houston Social University is a historically black college university, um, and so is Central State University then Wilberforce, Ohio. Um, so you, you recently, uh, you made a trip to D.C., right, in, oh. connection, with, in connection with the new administration? No, sir. Was, sir. was that in connection with the uh, so-called, I heard there's some called HBCU executive order? So that, that was a separate trip. I did not attend. It was a separate trip? Okay. Yeah, I did not attend that event, but I did attend HBCU week, which was held every year by the, by the president of the, of the United States. And um, at the time, it was under the Barack administration. Mm -hmm. And that, that week was designed to help elevate and educate HBCUs on a number of initiatives um, enumerating out of the president's office. How was that trip? It was very good, very informative. It allowed us to come together as institutions to talk about similar issues. How mm. do we better engage federal government on a number of projects, whether it's through contracts or grants, or how do we collaborate with one another on initiatives around retention, around persistence, around educating the current generation, mm. um, around how to, how to modernize our, our curricula to be sure that we're meeting the need for a 21st century job. So it's, it's another way for us to kind of get together, talk to with you collaboratively, and then also come out of that meeting with solutions about how do we engage our students, how do we engage our colleagues. Okay. Now, to my understanding, there's some kind of joint relationship or joint programs that the Job Corps and Houston Tillerson work on together, right? That's true. Mm -hmm. That's what, yes. what is that program? Um, the Tom Joyner Foundation, I want to say early in 2016, developed an initiative between four partner institutions, really eight partner institutions, um, in the Austin area and in the Jackson, Mississippi area. And what it is essentially is um, the Joyner Foundation working to build a pipeline from Job Corps to universities. And there's also a community college partner as well for each, for, for each area. So it's six of us total who are in the initiative, um, us, Houston Tillerson University, the Ger uh, Gary Job Corps Center there in San Marcos, and ACC are partnering together here in our region to ensure that students move from the Job Corps into the university mm -hmm. and, and receive the appropriate credential, whether it's a bachelor's degree in business, a bachelor's degree in education, so on and so forth. So we're working hand in hand with the Job Corps mm -hmm. and Austin Community College and the foundation to ensure that our students receive adequate education, the appropriate wraparound services, and the appropriate social emotional development. One, one of the things I do, and this uh, broadcast is partly in connection with, uh, I work as outreach and engagement director for the Travis County Republican Party, and one of the things that I do is I try to engage all kinds of people in all kinds of situations. Mm -hmm. And in talking to Dr. Anagia at Houston Tillotson, mm -hmm. he'd indicated to me that uh, there were students over at Houston Tillerson who were curious about conservative ideas and philosophies, mm -hmm. but that they needed some kind of support. And to that end, one of the things that I have done is uh, mm -hmm. organize a MLK association, which is trying to form a, a club at, at Houston Tillerson. Mm -hmm. And it being a liberal arts college, I thought, like I, it's like I told you, I was surprised to find that out, number mm -hmm. one. And number two, I thought, well, it's different types of thought are encouraged, so I'm looking forward to hopefully that coming into being. I know you and I talked about this yeah, about. We did, we did. And so. It's been a while, but we, we talk, I know we talked about it. We did, we, we kicked did. It around. And you're, and you're right, um, HT is a liberal arts institution. We, we definitely have our, we definitely have and are very proud of our faith-based roots in both the United Methodist Church 
in the United Church of Christ, but beyond that, we also wanted to grow our students in all ways, in all facets. And so with that, we offer a number of recognized student organizations on campus that allow our students to really explore all kinds of thoughts and ideas and concepts. And one of those may be their political views. And mm -hmm. so we're certainly open to mm -hmm. any organization um, coming on campus to really help our students understand um, all vantage points and viewpoints and how they can grow themselves as individuals and as, and as, a, and as citizens. I guess because I went to a Little Rock College myself, that's, mm -hmm. that's why I have so much respect and admiration for what, for what y'all do over there. Mm -hmm. oh, no matter how controversial it may be or seem, <laughs> I gotta be me. Right I know, <laughs> you go, you, I, I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. But the same thing, that I, some of the same things that mm -hmm. I have done at Houston Tillerson, Mm -hmm. I invaded the classroom one day and I had, with a voter education, voter registration program mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. uh, Liberty Action. I don't know if you heard about it. I, I, might, I might have sneaked that one past you. I think you did, Mike. It's okay. But I, 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 did, I, did, I, get by me every I can't, I can't do the same thing at, at Gary Job Course Center. It was like thir 13 or 1,500 students. You heard about yes, it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You heard about it and sneak it past you, huh? Mm, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, to me, it's just about getting things done, trying to equip people with different mm -hmm. ideas and different viewpoints so they can make True. their own decisions. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of our president's mantras is we don't tell students what to think, but what to think about. And so we want to really open students, I, open students' minds to the idea of all kinds of concepts, all kinds of viewpoints. And so we're, we're really major proponents of um, critical thinking, mm -hmm. experiential learning, and how better to do that than to engage yourself in the process. And so you have to hear from all sides of, the, of an issue to understand what your, what your, what your mm -hmm. thought is or what your position is on that particular issue. So we're, we're all about the ex experiential learning. You mentioned your president, Dr. Colette Pierce Burnett. Mm -hmm. We're friends on Facebook, and one day she, she, put a, she puts a question out there, what did she like? And I've met, I've met her on a couple of occasions. Mm -hmm. And so I read the question, what is she like? And having, had, having talked with her a couple of times, I, I just put challenge. And she, I think she said she liked my comment. I said, hmm. See there? I guessed right that time. Well, that was good. That was a good <laughs> guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. But both of you have, ch both have challenging mm -hmm. situations mm -hmm. that you work in. Mm -hmm. Because I hear about things at Job Corps Mm -hmm. About some some bad you know, some bad actors there and everywhere. Oh, true. They're, they're everywhere. They're just not. You know, we're not. We're not. We don't live in a bubble. You know, no. it happens. It happens all over the place. There's not one place that's immune from from the pressures of of growing up. You know, with a lot of these. You know, we have. You know, the same issues with with phones and iPads and mm -hmm. instant communication and. And you know, and, and a lot of times it it just it always comes down to kiss, you know, right. keep it simple, mm -hmm. and you know, go back to the basics, you know. So what do employers want? Right. And you know, that's why one of the things that we do, because Job Corps is always it it doesn't reinvent itself, but what it does do is that we're we're we always go through labor market information as to what is the current. Uh, offerings that is going to that are put our young people to work you know we put on this overhead linesman at the gary center it's been with us for a couple of years so job goes about making people produ productive 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 and making them employable you mm -hmm. know the average age of a linesman in texas is 51 years old oh wow and you know here we're training cadres of young people and we're putting out uh, students that go to work as overhead linesmen and they're all going to work mm -hmm. and they're all starting out anywhere from you know 15 plus an hour mm -hmm. but you know that one of the things that that's one of our vocations we have a vocation in correction and security mm -hmm. and you know and that's that's in Texas you know we, so you guys we, do placement too yes sir we place uh, you know Un, you know, unlike a lot of institutions, we follow up all of our students. When they graduate, we, we keep an eye, we, we always stay in communication with them for at least a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that on our report card, you know, Job Corps is the most <coughs> transparent program in the federal government. If you wanted to know what our placement numbers were, it's all there. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can go to Department of Labor because that's who we work for. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, what our placement numbers are, what our average wage is, and the job training match. You know, if you go to work, if you go to school to become a linesman, mm -hmm. you're not going to be flipping hamburgers. Mm -hmm. You're going to become a linesman. We have machinists. We have uh, just a, an expansive medical program mm -hmm. where they go into the certified nurses' aides, uh, the the office front office techs, uh, mm -hmm. phlebotomy, pharmacy. And you know, just a lot of things. And that's why it's so, it's so, well, once the students get a taste of what is there, mm -hmm. then that's when they go on to further education. Right. They just go to buff those skills. Because right. one of the things that, that growing up, then you realize that the more you learn, the more you realize that you don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times it just takes that little tweaking. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our students have gone on to have PhDs, uh, we had a young lady that came to us back in the early 90s mm -hmm. that was living in her truck. Mm -hmm. And now she's a doctor. But you know, it, she started out there and then went to Job Corps, became an electrician. Then she went on to join the Air Force, became a linguist. Mm -hmm. And then when in the Air Force, she, she went, started going to college mm -hmm. and then went to medical school and now she's a doctor in Kyle. Wow. But you know, and Life it's story. it's all it's all of those things. But you know, and like you were mentioning, you said you know a lot of times you hear the bad things, but you know it's always a squeaky wheel that gets the grease. The person that is not working has a lot of time to talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, we have we have armies of people that are out there that are all working and they're all being productive. And you know we try to maintain as strong as we can. Mm -hmm. Maybe this telecast will have people alum give me a call. I mean, you know you, where I'm at. You, you job know, Corps. but you know what I didn't know about Job Corps. I'd heard of it, and it was, what I heard about it wasn't all good. I did not realize it's really like a mini city, kind of like what y'all they had. They have health, mm -hmm. the health mm -hmm. center, health, yep. in for health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, stores or something. Oh yeah, uh, campus. Yeah, yep. it's, it's, it's like, like it's like it, a campus for yeah, real. It exactly. You know that's why I didn't you know, know going that. from one to the other. It's a, like you said. It is a it's a perfect fit. It is. It is. It's a seamless transition to, mm -hmm. to move from one space that's very intimate and personable mm -hmm. to another space that's very intimate and personal. Mm -hmm. I think that's the idea behind the the agreement is that students have a very similar experience at at the at the job mm -hmm. corps center and then move into the university setting at Houston Tillerson and they have that same kind of one on one relationship with the faculty member, with mm -hmm. the with an advisor, with a peer. They're able to really grow themselves and grow and grow their skill sets around mm -hmm. their profession. We call them stackable stackable credentials. Mm -hmm. So they earn mm -hmm. one credential here at the job mm -hmm. corps center, mm -hmm. they earn the next credential here at Houston Tillerson and mm -hmm. they go on to live proper, prosperous careers, yep. and they're able to give back and tell their story to another person who's making that same kind of mm -hmm. journey through the job corps to the institute, to the university, and then out into the out into the um, to the workforce. And mm -hmm. that's what we're all about. Just just like uh, Randolph had mentioned, um, we are definitely here to ensure that our students are ready for 21st century jobs. Mm -hmm. So we we read the market trends. We we um, right. engage with our employers, our our corporate sponsors to figure out what it is you need in today's graduate to be successful mm -hmm. in your organization. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it is the, the hard technical skill around processing this or doing this mm -hmm. or writing this, creating this, but they also need those social skills as well. Mm -hmm. Back mm -hmm. to the point made earlier, students really need to understand how to engage with their with their peer, with their manager, how to move up and down the ladder, how to move to different industries, and we work really hard mm -hmm. to understand what that looks like and grow mm -hmm. that skill set within them while they're at the institution. So when they leave un the university or, or any setting, they're fully equipped to do the technical work, but also fully able to also engage uh, successfully with their peers and their superiors. Well, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm impressed by what mm -hmm. each of you do for, for different reasons. I realize that in life, some people are early bloomers and some are late. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to me, a place like Job Corps, instead of being, I almost, I almost hate that it has the kind of reputation that it has a school mm -hmm. place for bad kids. Mm -hmm. but it's a place for kids who need, just may need extra time to adjust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and gather themselves and get to know mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. And then to have that kind of opportunity at, at Job Corps and then be able to go to a Houston Tillotson or UT or wherever they want to go mm -hmm. is, is a case. Well, you know, <laughs> there are, everybody's going to HT. But, and, you know, and you know, like you're saying, just to kind of mirror what you're saying is that, you know, we have to, we have to get over a lot of that. You know, because before we came on, I was talking about, you know, growing up in East Austin, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, in the 50s, you thought about East Austin. You, it's a whole different 
idea from what it is today. Sure. You know, and, and every, it's very progressive. You know, there's, there's, uh, there's business here. There's all kinds of things here. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with the Job Corps. You know, the Job Corps and higher education, you know, it, it had, an, it had a, a, a feel to the yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But today, like you said, you know, it's morphing continuously. You know, the stackable credentials, all of these, these different buzzwords that we're using now because we're in the world market. Mm -hmm. we're, not in, we're not in the Austin market. We're not in because, you know, you guys came from Cincinnati and I, with the Navy, I went around the world three times. And, but you see how we all fit in this mm -hmm. because there's so many things. And as we train young people, you know, they learn the rudiments with us. They learn that this is what I really want to do. And maybe I want to become a lawyer one day or mm -hmm. I want to become... Heaven forbid. Something. <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, they learn, they learn what, they, what they need to do. Right. And then they learn, you know, maybe I need to, be, to get into business management because I don't want to be working for somebody. I want to open my own business right. and I need to get the business background. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what you're talking about, all the stackable credentials. Because once they go into the workforce, then they'll start seeing how these things fit together go, right. You know, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, my hope is that with this show, if just one person would realize Job Corps is not a bad thing, one, Correct. it will have been worth it. Yes. As, as we say at Gary Job Corps, you know, it's not your, it's not your last chance, it's your best chance. Mm -hmm. When are you coming to our campus? Actually, I will be down pretty soon. Well, I look forward to seeing like you. Like mid-May, I'll be down. I'll down be there. Take mm -hmm. a full, full tour. Yep. Okay. But yeah, you know, it's it's your best chance. Mm -hmm. It's it's what we all need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, today's time we need to take control of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially with the challenges faced in, in mm -hmm. the most public school, many Correct. public schools. Correct. Mm -hmm. I was looking at Job Corps maybe as a, um, it kind of, in a sense, picks up where perhaps public school may not have best served someone. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's just, that's just, I, I, but I didn't know that until the last couple of years. That's okay. a quick personal testament. One of my brothers attended a job court there in Cincinnati, and he had a great experience. Mm -hmm. uh, for him, it helped him to really understand what it is he really was good at. It helped him to move through that process on into college. He went on to go to earn an associate's degree in business, and now he's in the music, the music business. Oh, yeah. And so it took him going to the job, going to job court there in Cincinnati to help him really understand and dig into what he's really good at, mm -hmm. and build those technical skills, and then move into a, a collegiate environment in order to earn another credential. And now he's off in music production, and that's all because of experience at the job court mm -hmm. there in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Had it not been for that, he did not receive that kind of um, training, if you will. He he's a Withrow Tiger as well. Um, did, did fairly well at Withrow, um, but he didn't quite walk out of that door with a, a true sense of what it, what, it is, what it is he was good at. Mm -hmm. But the Job Corps, they helped him to really untangle that and then to codify it in the, in the training program and then move into a college to earn his He kind of gave credential. him time to, to figure to it out. You know, yeah. to bloom. Yeah, yeah, he, and he's doing very well. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, it's, it's always important that a person either have a chance or feel like they have a chance. All right. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't feel like you have hope, Your it's hope easy lands. to give yeah. up. Yeah. True. I agree. You know, you're not getting a fight from me. Because I, I tell you again, you know, my mentor was Dr. Akins, Dr. Charles Akins. And, you know, and that's because he gave you hope. He gave you hope that you can do anything that you, that you wanted to. You just had to have the mind to do it. Right. And then when you get around, you get around like minds, it's easy to do that. But, you know, when... You know, sometimes in some settings, you know, people are just, they just push each other down. Mm -hmm. But you get into a unit where everybody's going up, of course. Yeah. There's one other thing about Houston Tillerson that stunned me when I first got here. I was Houston Tillerson, Houston Tillerson, Houston Tillerson. And my counterpart for the RPT, he was like, folk, I think, more focused on University of Texas. But just some, something in my, something about, something about, me said Houston Tillerson said maybe it's because of from Lincoln Heights I don't know <laughs> but uh I just thought to myself and then I, I then I heard from Dr. John Butler that Houston Tillerson was older than UT mm -hmm. it is oh yeah 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. HT is the oldest institution of higher education in Central Texas. It's been around yep. since 1875, and we've been mm -hmm. two separate institutions. Mm -hmm. um, it grew out of a church, Institute, right? Yeah. Two churches? Two churches, United Church of Christ, which, which is our Tillerson connection, mm -hmm. and then Sam Houston it, is our United Methodist Church connection. And so the two merged together in 52 to become one combined institution, and we maintain our roots in both of those churches to this day. You see a UCC church and a, a Methodist church? Yes, yeah, so United Church of Christ, which is Tillerson, and United Methodist Church, which is um, Sam Houston. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we still maintain a dual designation to this day. Thanks um, for that education. I, had, I didn't know it was that cut mm -hmm. and dry. I just, I just knew it grew out of churches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those, two, those two backgrounds. Because Dr. Butler had told me that you, to understand that, you know, the black community has a history of emphasizing education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that many times may, may tend to be overlooked, mm -hmm. even by us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or we forget. And that's one of, our, one of our goals as well, is to remain one of the key anchors here in East Austin to tell the story of the black community here in, mm -hmm. in, in East Austin and Austin in general, because we, we recognize ourselves as a destination point in East Austin, and so we have to be that cultural mecca, that center for that kind of education and edification around all things cultural. It's uh, interesting you say that because I say that to my co conservative friends. Mm -hmm. I tell them all the time that Houston Tillerson should be a hub for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it should be. Mm -hmm. And that's one because of our it, goals. It's a thought center. Mm -hmm. And in my little crazy dreams, I have these crazy ideas that they should have a think tank there. That's just I, me, me thinking. I, I think it's a great crazy. idea. And, we, and we, we are doing some of those kind of think tank things. Uh, we host a number of symposiums of, about a, a, an array of topics. We did a race unity symposium, which I was shocked to find out. And I, I still think it's the only one that's type in the nation. I say it. I may be wrong. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, so it's the only one I knew of. Yeah. I think it's, it's, not, it's not something that I don't know a lot of folks. I'm new to Texas still, so I'm, still, I'm learning all the parts and pieces. But it is a rare thing that we do here in the Austin area. Yeah, I, um, I kind of found that out by accident, just digging through the vill villager or something, got curious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just sort of curious sort. And I go places and do things and see what happens. And mm -hmm. I know there's a man upstairs. I figure I'm going to get out alive. I know I'm going That's to it. eat with him. So there you go. So I just go do things. It's good. And I just believe that, believe that everything ultimately can turn out okay. It will. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Houston Tillerson, but now you worry about Houston Tillerson at the same time. Mm hmm because of its location. Mm -hmm. Because that dirt over there is going to be worth a lot of cheese. Well, we plan to stay on that dirt. A lot of pressure. Yeah, we plan to stay on that dirt for a long time. We, we, we hope to be, we've been, there, we've been in, the, in, the, in the existence for 141, 142 years, and we plan to be on that same dirt for another 142. <laughs> yeah, I was so. sitting, I was sitting <coughs> I was, for a time I was commissioned on the City of Austin uh, African American Quality of Life Commission. I thought that we ought to do a resolution now. Mm -hmm. It say something about the, what it, that it stays on that dirt forever. Yeah, we're we're working now. We're working for that. I know there's there's ways to have um, a historical designation mm -hmm. to help preserve certain lands and certain plots, and so we're yeah. we're moving down that path it's, to ensure that we have that kind be. of designation. Mm -hmm. I um, the president the president of college. I know your the biggest concern not right now. She said to me it was bricks and mortar, mm -hmm. and I don't see why. There should be some way for Houston Tilson to get support, just like PP mm -hmm. down in uh, what, that Wilder County. It is, I think that's Wilder County. Prairie I think Prairie it's PP. It's, it's a, no, it's Cypress. It's the city. It's, an think, a, it's in the A and M system, right? It is. It is. So they they would consider. It, so we are a private institution, private, independent. Private. Um, but Prairie View, A and M, and, and Texas Southern are the two state supported institutions okay. that are HBCUs here in Texas. And the other, there's five of us who are private independent colleges. It's um, us here in Austin, Jarvis Christian, Wiley College, Texas College, and um, Paul Quinn. Wiley, that's mm. the one they did. Marshall. The, the movie, the movie. Uh, the Great Debaters. The Great Debaters, mm -hmm. which should be watched by everyone. It's a good film. Mm. Good film. So Randolph, what they, what yes, they under, sir. how's it, how, how's Job Corps, you, <coughs> how do you think Job Corps is going to fare with this new administration? We, we've had talks before, <laughs> but you know, uh, you know. I, in, in fact, I was talking to a friend of mine in Washington this morning, and we do have great bipartisan support. And you know, I I don't know. I'm not. I'm I'm apolitical on a lot of these things mm -hmm. because we have uh, there 
It's called Friends of Job Corps Congressional Caucus, and we have uh, 35 congressmen in Texas and 16 of them members of the, of the Job Corps Caucus. We have, we have some Republicans that are members, and we have some Democrats that are members. But, you know, and we have such strong support throughout the United States because a, a lot of our congressional representatives are very cognizant of the fact that this is it. You know, this is, you know, this is what we do. We train young people to go to work, and, and for every dollar that's spent on a Job Corps student, the, ta the taxpayer gets back $2.02. So it only makes good sense, you know, on the economic end of it. But, you know, it's, it's a thing that we've been doing, well, and, and our alumni is out there, and all it takes is, you know, we, we uh, make annual pilgrimages to Washington, and we make sure that our congressmen are well aware of what we do and all the community service that the young people do all the time. You know, my, I'm, I am not known for being apolitical. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, there's one thing that I, I believe that there's such a thing as the right thing to do. Correct. Some yes, things sir. are just right to do. Yes, sir. I agree. And on my show, I say right talk leads to hopefully right thinking, mm -hmm. and right thinking leads to right action, and you end up doing the right thing and learning and doing what's right. It's never a bad. It's never a bad time to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Correct. And both of you are engaged in activities that are mm -hmm. simply right. Oh, I agree. I agree. You know, I've, I've uh, you know, in my 20 years in the Navy, and I attended five colleges and universities to finally graduate, mm -hmm. but I have always, my beginning was right at Houston Tillotson, and I, and that formed what became my life mm -hmm. to get, to go on and to gr become, uh, I graduated from UT up in Arlington, because mm -hmm. I was, a, that's my last duty station, but, you know, this was the beginning. And that's why, you know, I'm glad that our partnership is going to be. And, and we had students prior to the, the program that have been attending H at Houston Tillotson. Mm -hmm. And they've gone on to, you know, they're throughout. We have a lot of staff members that graduated from Houston Tillotson. But, yeah, you're right. You know, you, it's hard sometimes when you, when you see young people that have become very successful and that came, that came to us with, just nothing, you know, and they, they, some of them lived in the street and, and you know, it, just different backgrounds. And then they come to a place, and again, about our partnership, because we have counselors as, as they're going to, as they're going to have counselors at Houston Tillotson. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and these guys, they all kind of have the same kind of backgrounds. You know, they go, you know, I understand what you're doing, and, and, uh, you know, the training that we do, it's not, you know, they could, they could go to all day academics if they need to get their GED, because that's what we also have. We have the GED, or what it's, what it's called today, and we have high school diploma programs, we have driver's education, and a lot of them come to us and don't know how to drive. And, and we pick up, uh, we have probably one of the largest ELL programs in the state. Mm. You know, because we have students that come not only from Central and South America, mm -hmm. Uh, Mexico, South Texas, but we have a lot of students that come to us from Guatemala, from the Middle East stuff, or from so. the Middle East. You know, we had years ago. I don't know if you remember when they had what was called the Lost Boys of the Sudan. Yes, we had thirty of those young men on the center. Wow! And you know, just and then a lot of them that come in from the you know different places, the different hot spots, the Sudan, and from different things. You know, we get a lot of students and. And we, that's part of our training curriculum. Mm -hmm. And then they go on and, and our instructors are, are experts in their trades. We have bricklayers and, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. So you but guys are really kind of rocking <coughs> in, the, in, the, in similar boats. Oh, right? yes. Oh, yeah. yes. You know, when you, you know, you just have to start. You have to start somewhere, and, it, and this is the perfect match mm -hmm. because you have to start somewhere because, you know, again, it's finishing school. Right. You know, we're learning how, to, we're learning how to, to do a few things, but then, you know, it takes a good saying. It's the dust of the diamond that polishes the diamond. That's true. And then, you know, our students go on to become polished diamonds. Well, it really doesn't matter like where you start. Off. It matters where you finish. And it's, 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 the, it's, the right thing, it's the right and good thing to do to give everyone an opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to 
finish in a good place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh boy. Tell me about Wayne about this this uh What's that, Kohlsbach Planning Committee over there, HD? What's they doing? Yes, sir. So Kohlsbach is an acronym, the Coalition of Schools that Educate Boys of Color. It's a national organization based out of the uh, Philadelphia area. And so they've, they, this is their 10th, I believe, anniversary conference that they've held across the country for the, for the last 10 years. And what it is, it's an organization that works with educators from principals all the way down to your, your um, classroom educators to, to, to empower them with the appropriate tools and resources to be able to properly engage a young person of color to ensure that they have what they need to be successful in the, in the classroom. They call it positive affirmation to ensure that the yeah. students are not necessarily treated as if they have a deficiency in something, but that they have the appropriate uh, requisite skills to be successful as a second grader all the way up to you being a high school senior. And so what it is, it, the, the group is coming to Austin to host their national conference and the university has partnered with Kohlsbach, University of Texas, the city of Austin, and Austin ISD to host this conference and we will have the youth gathering component on our campus. And what that is, is that those are all the young men from high school, from ages 12, I'm sorry, from the 12th grade all the way down to the 6th grade who will be on campus mm -hmm. to learn about the, the whole social emotional wellness, to get appropriate training around being a positive young man on campus or in, in your high school, to be able to be a leader, to be a, um, a scholar, so on and so forth. And then across town, we will have the, um, the adults assembled to do some training around how to, how to deliver education in a way that ensures their success. So we are one of the partners helping to, to motivate and inspire the next generation of leaders while at the same time I'm encouraging them to come to our campus to become educated beyond their high school experience. When is that going to be? It takes place this week actually. The, this week? Uh, the conference kicks off on Wednesday and it concludes on Friday. Hmm. And it's going to be on campus? So the, uh, the youth gathering part starts on Thursday, and that begins on campus, and then the, um, the larger conference begins on Wednesday. And so it's, it's at between UT and, and HT are the two locations for, for the sessions. And students come from throughout the United States, different places? Yes. We have and a they're going to be staying in the dorms? No, no, no. So they, they, they have host hotels come with chaperones, and so they'll mm -hmm. be at their hotels, but they'll be bused back and forth between their hotel, UT, and HT throughout the week, or throughout the three days they're here in the area. You sneak that one past me. I try to, I try to pride myself on trying to keep up with what's going on in, in Austin. Well, that wasn't intentional. I apologize. <laughs> Next time, I'll be sure to come down and sit with you before we do if, that. If I had caught you last week when I came by there, I probably would have known. Yes, sir. That's true. But that's more I my fault my, than I yours. Missed my chance. <laughs> that's more my fault. Yeah, I didn't have an appointment. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, you know how I do. Yes, sir. I just you're always welcome to stop by and <laughs> chat with me. We have good discussions. You know, I, I, I give drive-by new meaning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I, th I just think that I just go with what I feel sometimes. Mm -hmm. But that coast box sounds interesting. It seems like it might offer some mentoring opportunities. There are a lot of uh, nonprofits in Austin, mm -hmm. and they do, do a lot of mentoring, uh, particularly of African-American young men. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about Isaac Rowe and Man and Me. We do, we do a lot of things cooperatively. Okay. And I, I, I try to do a lot of things cooperatively because we have to work yeah. together. We're all in one city, and we all want what's best mm -hmm. for everybody, I hope. Yeah. Yes, oh, I do. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think we do. Anybody else. I think we're all in the same boat, rolling in the same direction. We all need to put our paddles on at the same time and, and then row, and then we'll see some positive change in the community, um, mm -hmm. and, and we'll also see that change hit those who need it the most. Um, I think all of us stand to, to do some growth and development, but I think there are certain segments of the population um, who, who need more support, more guidance, and, and a bit more intentional efforts around their growth and development. And so partners like HT, your organization, Job Corps, are all doing those things in a very intentional way to ensure they have what they need. It's called a safety net. Mm -hmm. And some, some segments have that safety net kind of built in, whereas other segments do not have it. And so we have to band together as organizations and entities to ensure that they have the requisite skills, the requisite safety net to ensure their success going forward. You know, I know that in America, you always talk about the individual, the individual, the individual, but it's really not so much about an individual alone. Mm -hmm. It's about individuals working cohesively together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and, and caring about each other, giving a damn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, a village takes a village to raise a child. 
And that's what this, it's a, like I said, it's a cooperative, you know. We all work together to try these things to make them happen. And by train, by bringing at-risk youth on, get them into a setting where they can acquire a skill and then go on to finish higher education. You know, you took someone from, that's probably the first, probably first generation, first mm -hmm. generation to any kind of higher education of the first generation college graduate. You know, and, and those things are the things that, that break them break the mold. And I and I see that a lot where we have some students that have gone and become successful and I see their kids and they go, Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, to think that I knew you and like I said, I've been with Job Corps for twenty five years. And to think that I saw you when you first came to Job Corps and mm -hmm. go, mm. And then here you are, you're married with some kids and you got a house and you got a great job and mm -hmm. making good money. And those are the things. Yeah. I think it's entities like ours that really kind of change the course of someone's life. They're moving in this direction. It may not be the best direction for them, mm -hmm. but they interact with the Job Corps or our Houston Tillerson and that kind of that redirects their lives. And it puts, it puts them on a new trajectory to success that they would not have had had it not been for the interaction. Right. And that's why I love the work that I do and that other, uh, others oh, yeah. do because it helps to, to level set and to reroute some folks who, who have all the potential in the world who just need an opportunity. And so when they're, when they're met with an opportunity at any of our organizations, they're able to truly level up and to, to reach their full potential. Whereas had they not ran, run into someone at one of these organizations, they would have have um, a very different life ahead of them. Well, in my, in my view, different people, things go click at different times. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, True. some people get un certain understandings early, mm. others later. Some of it is dictated by circumstance, mm -hmm. and some of it is just plain luck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to me, when you have always, if you always have a chance, something good can happen. Mm -hmm. But when you, when chances foreclose or when things are cut off from you because somebody makes a misjudgment about where you were at a certain point in time, that's just not right. Mm -hmm. Because well, you know, not, you know, if God have, doesn't give up on you, mm -hmm. why should, who, who am I? True. Yeah. Well, you know, that's why we try to take we try to take all of those obstacles out of the way, right. and that's throughout the entire job course system. That, you know, we have the the students get uniforms. They they live on center. They they get you know the meals are free. They get a stipend if you know every two weeks. It's not a lot, but it's a little. Mm -hmm. And then everything that they need is being supplied to them. Mm -hmm. And then a, a lot of the sporting activities. So a lot of young people are, and that's how George Foreman mm -hmm. got into what he was doing. Because it, you know, we have a whole athletic complex, you know, where, you know, if they wanted to do pottery and string art or whatever, you know, a lot of things that, that if it's a subsistence allowance that you, I mean, living that you came from, you were just busy trying to make a living mm -hmm. and to enjoy some of the comforts of, of leisure time activity. So, you know, that's some of the things that we do. And then, you know, everything is kind of, you know, you come in, you, you know, everybody works as a unit and you, you do things together and, and everybody has uniforms. So you know who the different trades are, the, the medical and the, and the machinist and the carpentry and the warehouseman. So, you know, it, that takes away that part of it. So they become and it's all part of the, the, they all become a unit, so they can all see the, there's not so much individualization as there is the camaraderie in the esprit de corps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then those things are, are to give them a firm footing to where they can just go on from that. Because all the things that are taken care of, a lot of the, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, a lot mm -hmm. of those bottom things are taken care of, mm -hmm. where the, you're just not, you know, just totally trying to subsist where you can get a lot of those other things out and then you can start working on that self-actualization where then you start seeing the top of the pyramid. Right. And it's easier to see that when you don't have to worry about the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then you start looking up and, you know, like this partnership that we have, students are very aware of what's going on. You know, the, the shameful part, to my view, is that too, too many people are as ignorant as I, as I was. Mm -hmm. That's what Oh yeah, you know I, that's what I wish wasn't the case. Uh, me too. Yeah, and I wish I could 
wave a magic, wave a magic wand, or spit out the right words, it, it would go out that way and be received that way. That mm -hmm. it's not a bad mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Job Corps has kind of almost been pushed, it has the reputation of being a bad thing. And it's not a bad thing. I, I, I know. I'm, I'm a believer. I drank the Kool-Aid long time ago. <laughs> but no, you know, I, I drank the Kool-Aid long time ago. And, I'm, and, you know, again, it's the same thing. Where you go into any kind of setting and then right away, you know, there's this, this misnomer that, that this is what happens there. You know, initially when the program first started, there were people that, that came in from different parts of the country and they sent them to different other places part of the country where they tried to, you know, they tried to socialize them. But you know, these young people got in there, they were just, they were just not happy. Mm -hmm. And then that's probably where you know, some of the reputation came. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, I don't like being here. Mm -hmm. But you know, right now, and this is pretty standard among all the Job Corps centers, we recruit 95% of our population from the state of Texas. Mm, yeah. And you know, and the other, being the other 5% come in from different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. But yeah, 95% come right out of Texas. Houston, the Valley, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, they're all from here. Mm. I had a conversation with the, your president. Uh, I was at a uh, a Juneteenth mixer last year, I believe it was. And mm -hmm. something I, always, I usually say on my show, I say, what's good for the black community is good for the community, because I believe that. Mm -hmm. And the president, the president said, she said, and Michael, what's bad for the black community is bad for the community. <laughs> 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 you know, I just didn't think that. I didn't mm -hmm. think that. She gave me the flip side. Mm -hmm. Because I'm always trying to find a way if at all possible, people to, for people to work together for the common good. Mm -hmm. That's what we're supposed to be about. Oh. Not about this is Democrat, this is Republican, this is conservative, this is liberal. This is, there's such a thing as right mm -hmm. and good. Mm -hmm. And bad and no good. But I'm try, I always look for the positive. But she gave me the flip side. And I think the, the intent behind that comment was to, to, to give you like the full view of what it is. We, don't, we, we, need to be, we have to be cautious of how we, how we engage everything or every aspect of, of society because some things are not necessarily meant for good purposes. Mm -hmm. And so while um, it, it may need to be addressed, we may not have the capacity to do that. And so I think that was probably the intent behind that in order to understand how, we, how do we best engage and what can we add the most value we can find ourselves in a situation where we've tried to engage with good intentions, but the the outcome is is, is negative because it was never meant to be a good outcome. If that, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that get, that that happens. Yeah, some people have bad intentions. Mm -hmm. not, not everybody's wishing other other people well. True, true. Because some people make money off others' misfortune. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, but that's just this is just life. Now, Wayne, you, I see that you serve on quite a few boards and stuff like that. You're going to stay in shape, bro. You know, you're running. I, I, I keep my tennis shoes on at all times. I'm you going should. from one place to the next place all the time. Okay. <laughs> Trying to do good, as you mentioned earlier. And Randolph is always running. Every time I hear about you, you're running somewhere. Mm, <laughs> I have uh, too much life. At 67, I'm not stopping. <laughs> yeah. It keeps no, you young. Two oh, things, yeah. Two things I hear about, hear, hear about Randolph. Randolph running, Randolph eating hot peppers. Of course. Take my hot sauce with me everywhere I go. You know, that's just a force of habit now. But, yeah. I, you know, again, I just to mirror what you guys are saying, you know, because the rising tide lifts all boats, you mm -hmm. know, because where everybody's working together, the boat's going to rise. True, true. Yeah, I was trying to sound like me, man. Still well, right see, there now. Well, <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, learning. Okay. You're still, I'm learning. You're still young. <laughs> you, I'll slow down a little bit, let you catch up. <laughs> You're not slowing down. I know better uh, than that. Mm -hmm. I just need to get a little more pep in my step. Oh, you can do that, yeah. But yeah, you know, we are just you know like we did, we we all drank Kool Aid, so it, we're 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 stuck with that now. So that's what we have to do. Well, again, as I, I say, my my show's name Right Talk with Mike Lee because I believe in at least trying to do what's right mm -hmm. and fighting to do it right, mm -hmm. do things the right way at the right time, and 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 get a positive outcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because to me, that's what life is all about. It's a much easier life to do the right thing. It's, it's hard for me. It's hard to do the wrong thing, and so 
when you when you live right and you do right by others, it's, it's easy for the rest at night time. As you know, you've made a, a, a an attempt at making a positive impact on somebody's life. Well, let's see. It's about time. It's about my time is just about up for the day. It's been really great having you gentlemen on my show, and I hope that somebody learned something. I know I learned something. But if I, my audience doesn't gather in, but one thing, please gather that the Job Corps is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And Houston Tillerson is a heck of a place. And it's a school of choice. Yeah. And it should be your first choice for school, right? Yes, sir. It's never worse like, like, like I was drowned in in Granville, Ohio. <laughs> this would be a better place to drown in, for real. Yeah, take my word for that. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for being on my show. Thank you for the opportunity. And Wayne, I'm going to extend over the air another invitation to you because we got to talk about this, these other things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I want to go. I want to go deep into this uh, Tom Joyner, HT thing. Okay. HT and Job Corps thing. Okay. So y'all gonna have to, one or both of you gonna have to come back. Oh, you know, I, I'm open for anything. Anytime. I'm anytime. open as well. I want to thank you for coming. I appreciate you inviting us. I, I really do. Thank really you do. so much. No, the pleasure's all mine. Thank you. Anytime I have to amplify the HT story, I'm all for it. And then again, this, this beautiful partnership with the Job Corps, mm -hmm. we're, we're really excited about mm -hmm. it. So we're looking forward to doing more things like that with other partners. So any chance we can get to talk about HT? You know, you know, us you, up. You know I'm all about hooking, hooking, hooking people up. I, yes, I, I, be I believe in... In the I believe in partnering. Yes, sir. I just believe in partnering. It's the right thing to do. Because mm -hmm. if we partner together and we're trying to do good things, positive things, mm -hmm. we, we may actually end up doing something right and helping somebody. Well, it's the same way I feel that, you know, in, in working with these young people, you know, that we're there. You know, we're there to pick them up. We're there to bring them on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and big brothers. And that's what it's all about. It is. You know, iron sharpens iron. So we're we're here to help each other. You mm -hmm. sound like Latrice Cook. That's the name of her <laughs> radio show. Oh yeah, iron sharp sharpens iron. Sh iron sharpens iron. Yeah, she's on KZI radio with my buddy Ken Thompson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, iron Thompson used to work sharpen. at Gary. Huh? K K KT? I think so. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, the Reverend Thompson and then Wayne. Wayne Thompson. The other Wayne, not this one. I want to thank you oh. guys again. And the MLK Association wants to thank you also. Thank you, Ryan. Travis County Republican Party even wants to thank you. Well, thank you for thanking us. <laughs> right. Thank you for the thank you.